Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. In this video, which is uh, a continuation on optimization problems in differential calculus, we're going to talk about how to minimize the time to get somewhere if you're traveling over two surfaces, basically at two different rates. Um, often, there's a very traditional example in calculus, and usually it's something like uh, a ball uh, is thrown into water and a dog has to fetch it, right? But <clears throat> that's kind of a trivial example. So let's actually take something not so trivial. Let's suppose that you live out in the country. I live out in the country, so that kind of works out. And so let's suppose that your house is right here. This is home right here. You have a nice square house with a, with a triangular roof. And you have a dirt road. Actually, you don't even have a road, honestly. You just are you you know you park your car out on the roadway and you either hike into home or you just drive your car it's four-wheel drive and you drive it across uh, a field to get to your house okay but somehow uh th it is uh, the case that you are going to get to your house by driving down some dirt road so let's say that there is a highway right here or maybe actually it's some road that has schools on it. Maybe there's a school right here. Uh, whoops, except that that's not how you spell school. Um, and there might be residential houses everywhere, right? So there's just a lot of other things. But at some point, there's a few entrances. There's always some entrance to get into this dirt field here and to start driving to your house. Now, obviously, if you start here, you have a few options. You could drive directly across the field to get to your house, starting at the starting point and drive directly across the field. Or you could drive down the road away a little ways and then drive across the field. Or you could drive all the way down the road and then drive directly across the field perpendicular to your house. A lot of different ways to do that. But let's invent some speeds here. Let's say the speed along the field, the maximum speed you can ever go along the field is maybe 20 miles per hour. That's as fast as you can go. And that's if you're hauling. Okay. And now the speed limit, maybe along the roadway, let's pretend the speed limit on the, on the roadway is normally 35 miles per hour. That's because, well, actually, because there's a school, let's say it's 25 miles per hour. Okay. Now, you have these options. Obviously, a lot of people kind of go for the, I just drive 25, I get to this perpendicular piece right here, and I'll just drive the dirt road or the dirt field to get to my house. Um, but what if something happens? What if you something happens at your house? Um, either somebody breaks in or, or you injure yourself, you have to call 911, you want people there immediately, right? You'd rather they get there through the fastest route possible. So what is the fastest route? Well, it completely depends upon these distances. So let's say that you live off the road, but this distance here that you live off right there is maybe, uh, let's say four miles, four miles total distance. And let's pretend as though the entrance to the road. So there's a bunch of different roads coming into this. But the fact is the entrance that any type of emergency vehicle is going to take down this road starts a total of 10 miles down the road. Okay. This is somewhat more realistic uh, than the dog fetching a, a ball out of water, which is something you'll see in a homework example or something like that. So if you live four miles off into a field, now basically you live in the woods. And if that's the case, um, it's going to take quite some time if you're, if you're injured or if there's an emergency at your house. So you want to maybe uh, know some information beforehand. Like, hey, if you're going to save me, you better make an entrance about three quarters of a mile after you enter my street. You're going to get here the fastest that way or something like that. So let's say you're making a battle plan that if you get injured, you can call them up and say, uh, once you enter my street, drive so many miles and then just get into the field and drive in this direction, right? I'll have the light on. You'll be able to see it or something like that. All right. So minimize the time to get to your house from start to house. So let's minimize. That's the example. Okay. Example, minimize time it takes to get to the house. 
So let's go ahead and redraw this because my, my drawing there was pretty terrible. I mean, it's still going to be terrible when I redraw it, honestly. But at least when I draw it this time, I'll have really solid numbers in here. I know that distance is four. I know whoops, that this distance here is 10. I know the speed that I can do along those roads, but it's an emergency vehicle. So yes, it's 25 miles per hour as a normal speed limit, but I'm going to pretend as though uh, the velocity that the car can go along the roadway, um, at least an emergency vehicle, I'm going to assume that they can go a maximum of, uh, let's say 50 miles per hour. They're just, they're willing to have a little bit of risk to get here, but not enough to, to wound somebody on the road, right? And the velocity in the field, the fastest speed they can go in the field, um, let's just say again, is maximized at 20 miles per hour, just because it's bumpy and whatever, that's the max they can go, all right? And now what I want to do is I want to find this pristine, beautiful entering point. What's the best place they can enter to minimize the amount of time driving so here's start here's finish right here okay. i'm gonna actually you have options so uh, a lot of people will say um well if i know the total distance is 10 then i've driven x along this road and i still have 10 minus x left and that is true actually however personally and it would work out this way by the way you could totally do this but personally for me because i know i'm going to be using the pythagorean theorem in a moment I am going to call this X and this 10 minus X. Wouldn't you agree that if X is the distance that you didn't drive here, you have currently driven 10 minus X miles. So it, it would, it still works out. It's just that when I find the, the distance along this field that I'm driving, it's just the square root of X squared plus four rather than the square root of uh, quantity x 10 minus x and quantity squared plus four that's just a little bit of a mess so to avoid that mess i am uh, putting the x as one of the legs of the triangle okay now i want to and you know what i, sh I shouldn't call those velocities now that i'm thinking about it, i'll call it rates rates here now i'm going to go ahead and talk about how do i minimize the time so let's talk about that uh time total the total time it takes somebody to get to my house, an emergency vehicle to get to my house, is the time that they spend driving on the road plus the time they spend driving in the field. And again, I want to have a battle plan. I moved into this house on the sticks, and I want to make sure that if um, that that I let my police department know, if you're going to save my life, here's where you enter. I put a little sign on the road, enter here if you're here to save Roy's life, something like that. Uh, well, let's see how much time do they spend along the road. And I'm going to highlight this. Here's the time. Here's the distance along the road. Actually, let me scroll down so you can see that. And then we have a distance. They, they drove along the dirt field right here. Okay. Well, that's not time that's distance, but I happen to know there's a relationship between time rate and distance, right? Distance is rate times time. That is times are the same thing as distances over rates. So the time on the road, that's the same thing as saying, oh, it's the distance on the road divided by the rate that I'm moving on the road. Plus the time spent in the field is the distance that you spent driving through the field divided by the rate at which you drive through the field. Now I'm going to go ahead and this is actually my master equation, by the way. All right. However, I need, there's way too many variables here, right? Time, dr, r sub r, d sub f, r sub f. So I, I really need to reduce these down to only two variables. Let's see. The total time is equal to, well, the distance along the road. You can see it, it's in yellow right there. It's 10 minus x. And we were told how quickly we drive along the road. It's this piece right here. If it's an emergency vehicle, I'll say 50. Plus the distance along the field, that's the blue right there. And that's root X squared plus four. Divided by how quickly somebody can drive in my field, which is not very fast, 20 miles per hour. 
And notice now my equation here, and I'll go ahead and box that up with a highlighter, this equation right here only has two variables in it. So I can actually optimize that equation. And that involves taking the derivative of this function t, and actually I'm just gonna call it t, so t prime is equal to, the derivative of the first term is negative 1 50th. The derivative of the second term, and you can double check my work here, is x over uh, 20 root x squared plus four. Again, you could probably double check my work there. And critical numbers occur when your derivative is zero or when your derivative is undefined. This derivative is always defined because all denominators are always non-zero, so it's defined always, but t prime equals zero when that expression on the right-hand side is equal to zero, or in other words, when 20 root x squared plus, oops, that's supposed to be an x squared. Do that again. Did I write plus four? Is that supposed to be plus four? Uh-uh, somebody's probably yelling at me this entire time. It's supposed to be a plus 16. Sorry about that. So this in here is a 16. One of you is yelling in the future right now, and I heard you. Fixing all that, plus 16. Okay, well, left-hand side and the right-hand side is going to be 50x. We should probably check everything else, right? Just because I made that one mistake, I could have made 10. Anyhow, uh, let's see, um, squaring both sides, I get the following, 400 times x squared plus 16 is equal to 2,500x squared. <laughs> I didn't make that mistake. Uh, subtract 400x squared from both sides and multiply that 16 times 400. That's 6,400 is equal to uh, 400, 2,100 x squared divided by 2100 and you get that 64 21st is equal to x squared or in other words that x is equal to plus or minus I'll, I'll write it that way 8 over root 21. now x is a distance along this roadway actually it's it's the remaining distance along the roadway you cannot have a negative remaining distance so i am going to throw out the negative bit for reality purposes so I'm just going to go ahead and erase that. Okay, so x, uh, one critical number, the only critical number I have actually, is x equals 8 over root 21. So let me go ahead and make my table of values. Um, x versus, uh, what are we, what's our output? Time. Okay, um, 8 over root 21 is one of my critical numbers. Now, there is a little subtlety here. You also have to think about um, there has to be like something in here that takes the shortest amount of time, something that takes the, the longest time, or maybe two things that take the longest time, whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at two cases. One where X here is zero. If X were zero, I would drive those 10 miles, right? At 50 miles an hour. And then I would drive those four miles at 20 miles an hour. Okay, so uh, one case is where x is equal to zero. And then the other case that I'm going to look at is where x is equal to 10. In other words, that they hop onto my roadway and they immediately start driving across the field. So one case, they just drive my road or drive the, 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 uh, the nice paved road and then hop on the field at the perpendicular point. And the other case, the extreme case is... Uh, when they just immediately hop into the field right when they get through my road. Okay, so uh, x equal 10. And we're going to look at the time it takes in each of those scenarios. All right. And the way that I'm going to do this, let me pause. I'll just grab a calculator and, and compute this out because I'm just, I have my function t. Remember t is, uh, well, actually, I don't have to write it here. t is listed up above. It's uh, da, 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 that guy that I just recently fixed. So I'm going to plug in 0. 10 and then that 8 over root 21. So give me a moment. I'll be right back. Okay, so I grabbed my calculator, went through the computations. I just plugged all those values of x into my time formula. You can see actually there's not that much of a difference uh, in this trivial case or in this case that I made up. Uh, it still is the fastest 
if they enter the field when x is equal to 8 over root 21. And I didn't even actually bother to calculate that. So really quickly, I'm going to compute that 8 over root 21 is about 1.7 miles in. So roughly 1.7 miles. So if they were to, to hop on the roadway, I'd probably put a sign out here about 1.7 miles away from this perpendicular point saying enter here it saves me a minute and you know what when if you're choking well obviously at 23 minutes is probably bad news but if something else is going on a minute can save a life and so that's very important to think about that i mean that one minute difference between here and here by the way the zero stands for when they just entered they drove the roadway the entire time and then entered at the perpendicular moment okay um while it take that would take them a minute longer and to me i'd rather if a minute's going to save my life i'd rather them drive in the dirt the worst possible case scenario as you could probably figure is this one that takes 32 minutes and that's because of the fact that they are driving in dirt the entire time that's when x is equal to 10 and so that's a terrible terrible route. Now you see these problems all over optimization uh, homework sets. So just be very aware, watch through the video um, and ignore my mistake of plus 16 in there, or the plus four in there. I fixed it partway through at least. Um, and then actually before I finish this up, I want to showcase uh, something on uh, Desmos here. All right. So you can see in Desmos, I put in the function t of x is equal to. I'm going to go ahead and hide that for the moment and I'll take this down here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. You can see that is the low, there is a low point in there near to zero. And if I zoom in near to zero here, to find that low point in Desmos, you can actually click on the function and it'll plot. Well, let's see if, nope. Yeah, if you just click, it'll plot the actual midpoint. I accidentally clicked at that point. I could have clicked anywhere. It would have actually highlighted that point. So 1.746, and it tells me it takes... 0.383 hours to get there, which is the number that I had in my computation uh, over here, right? Uh, down here, 0.383. Uh, so anyhow, um, that's kind of cool that you can use that uh, and you can visualize the minimization there using something like Desmos. I certainly hope that this video helped out. Uh, I'm sorry that I made that mistake part way uh, in, but, uh, but still, we caught it and... Uh, all right. Have a good day.